this is G from TST. This is the Chevy Volt, part of our GM scan tool shootout. We're on the Delphi scan tool, so I'm going to move it over right there so we can see. As you can see, we're on the Chevy Volt. We're going to do DTC health check. We're going to see how long that takes. It's checking all the different systems on the vehicle. So far, so good. Now this is on a special tablet that comes with the tool. The tool looks like a J-Box because you can do programming. It does do coding. And we're going to see what this comes up with. So, so far it seems to be moving very fast. And right now it's in the chassis section as you can see. That hybrid code there was for a uh, battery door problem. That's the little door that opens up on the vehicle. But it is doing this. It is approaching uh, about one minute. It's looking at the cameras. Heating air condition system. Your normal stuff that you've seen on the other video that we did on GMs. So then you can make a comparison for yourself to see if this Delphi tool works for you compared to all the other tools that we did. And the list, of course, we started with the GM GDI. We uh, used Autel, Autoland Scientech, Launch, Snap-on, OTC. So it told us it went through 27 modules, that there are two DTCs, in the H, that's the high voltage PCM, and in the regular PCM, and a total of four. And it did that in about a minute and a half. All right, so we're gonna go back. We're gonna go into the powertrain module. And in the powertrain module, we'll see how many PIDs are in here. And since this vehicle, remember, has two different DLC plugs. We're in the one, the normal one on the left side of the car, not the one on the right side of the car. So we're going to go into powertrain, because that's what we selected on the other ones. And we're going to look at data list first. And by the way, this software, you can buy it with the hardware, the J2534 box, this box right here, um, you can use it on a regular computer. And now if we look at all the data, because you notice it has engine one, air condition, all that, obviously when you select all the data, everything is going to be a bit slower. It's going to take some time to go through everything. So we'll see uh, in a few minutes here, or less, that it's going to pull up all the data. Everything you've seen in those little subcategories will be something that should be showing up here all in one. Now, when you're selecting PIDs, it would have been better to go into one of the groups, but that's not what we did when we were on the other one. So that didn't take that long, by the way. So you can see we got a whole bunch of information here is a total of 587 PIDs. So this is an extensive list. So you can see they do everything in alphabetical order. And they got everything from hybrid stuff in here to battery, okay. And some of them are just simple yeses or noes, but I think we had seen the same thing on the other ones. And again, you would want to compare it. So here's a lot of just yeses and noes. I stay on, but you can see, you should be able to hear me over all that noise. 
So you got everything from relays to camshaft positions, injectors, so you got all your engine. And since the engine is not on, because basically it is an extended range vehicle, you're only seeing some of the stuff here populate with any numbers that would be useful. So it has a lot of stuff here. And we'll just, we'll drag that down to make it quicker. So you can go like this into system. You can look for things in alphabetical order. Pretty nice setup, it does graph. And we're gonna go back. And we're gonna look at some output test. There's OBD2 test, so it does that. Extended mode six information. Let's take a look at mode six, just so you can get an idea of what this tool does on mode six. It's checking the MIDs, the monitor ID, the SIDs, component ID, and TIDs, the test ID. So it tells us if we got anything currently failing or not. And so far, everything looks like a pass, which is pretty good. All right, we're going to go back. Let's see what bidirectional capability it has. And we're going to go into powertrain. And when we go into powertrain, for bi-directional control, we have to hit OBD2 test. Now to give you drive cycle criteria, let's take a look at that. So if you wanted to know the misfire monitor, for argument's sake, it tells you what to do. If you wanted to know the EVAP monitor, it tells you what to do there. That's pretty helpful. And if we go back one and we do device control, device control is going to be our bi-directional control. And again, this is like knowing your scan tool. If you know what they have in the scan tool and the capabilities of the scan tool, then obviously you would know to go into OBD2 test here. So you can look at different things here, catalyst test, clutch pedal test, um, starter relay test, they have compression test, Injector, fan control. Okay, I don't see engine speed command. So since the engine's not running, it's probably one of the reasons we would have to pop the hood on this. But it does have bi-directional control and has worked on other cars. Special test, there's nothing in here. There's nothing there. But if we go look at it here, and let's go try to go to a different system. This engine, again, the engine is not running. And if there's nothing here, let's go in a body so maybe you could hear something and see that the bi-directional test actually works. So now it's going to take a little while because it queries all the different computers. But uh, let's see what it does here. And if it has a command like wipers or horns, something you guys could hear out there, then obviously... Uh, I'm going to play with that and you could hear it. So we got to give it a few seconds and see what happens. Okay. So now if we go in a body, so a lot of submenus there. And here they put it just under device control, not under OBD2. Normally the way we would look at something. Uh, Let's see if they have something with a horn here. Horn command. I'm going to go back. Okay, so we know the bi-directional does well. We can run a crank command here. High beam. Let's try to high beam. tool seems pretty capable. 
You can also see how I made it full screen mode. I went into settings after I exited the tool and you could put minimize or restore or whatever command you like. So thank you for watching. Have a great day.